couple different things, and that is uh, we want to help seal the meetings. And how you seal the meetings is, um, you know, if, if and, and he did, God lifts other things out of you that don't belong, which happened big time yesterday and the day before. You know, you can speak a prophetic word can go in. You don't have to take authority over a demon, but you can speak a prophetic word that's truth, and it'll drive out the darkness that's been sitting there. And then, then what happens, though, is many times we'll get away from the meetings, and it, it, people will say, well, it seemed like it came back or whatever. Some of it is our belief system. We need new training. We need new knowledge. We need to go after it and retrain the brain. Um, but the other part is just sealing that out that just says, actually, that's covered by the blood of Jesus now. Done. Done. And we're moving on to other things. And, um, you know, part of what the devil likes to do is keep us captive and distracted. You know, um, whenever we're moving ahead in the spirit, he'll, he'll captivate us somehow and then distract us. So we're constantly looking at that as that's the attraction. And even if it's a negative thing from our past, that's the attraction. Uh, and um, instead of being attracted to the glory, we slowly move over into being attracted here. And so we, that's how you, we, we do that. We seal that through prayer. And then you continue in what you said, right? Six months from now, something comes up. It's like, no, actually, that's sealed already. I'm not open. I'm not porous. I'm not a sponge to this thing anymore. We already dealt with it in the name of Jesus. Um, you know, because the devil likes to try to test those grounds all over again and see, you know, if there's anything there. Um, Jesus said that, you know, he did not trust man because he knew what was in him, in him, right? And so um, there's a there's that part that we can be that fickle and we can swish back and forth. And when we're in the meetings, I had one person say, whenever we're in open heavens, I just want to stay in that, right? All year long, I just want to stay in that why can't we just stay in that and and um so uh the gift that um, calvin especially calvin and brian uh, operate in or the gift that we've learned about um the giftings there's many giftings there that's imparted that's a gift to us that's just like you know you don't necessarily have christmas every day right but there's this empowerment when you do it's kind of like wow we are blessed and that's how it should go down you know you bless people they bless you it's like oh this was good and um, the gifting is there to propel you into those next things of God you're, you're supposed to go into. Um, you know, um, a specific, I was standing here when you, when you got the word last night, right? And I could see you light up in that that was like, it was probably confirmation, number one, answers to questions, number two. That, that's what happens when it comes forward. But then all of a sudden that light will hit you and It'll light you up, energizes you. You're like, oh, well, let's get going. Well, that very thing that you say you're going to do then, um, you know, don't think that the devil won't challenge you in it. So you seal the moment. You seal the fact that last night, this is what happened. You write that down. This is what was said. This is the prophecy over me. Devil tells you opposite. Play it again on your phone. Write it out and read it out loud. See, prophecy... Uh, that Calvin gave over Pastor and I uh, probably a year ago already. It's been it's been something. It's like at least once a week. At least once a week, I'll pull it out and say, "By the way, the Lord said this." You know, this is what He said. This is who I am. This is where we're going. Because prophecy is not something. It's not magical. You know, like whoo, there. It, it's that thing you you step into by faith. And the confirmation is the words of knowledge and the words of wisdom that are given. At that moment, you know this is God imparting into you. So once he imparts it as a gift in you, you're like, I'm not letting this go. And so how you seal the deal, right? So I had brought that up to you, uh, trying to remember what the word, that phrase he said over you last night. And then as you were here, he's, he said, see, see uh, he just covered it. God covered her in this. It's like he sealed that area. So there's a concept in that, that when you receive through that portal, through that, it, that, through that area, um, through that hearing, through that sight, through whatever way he got it into, then you seal that as fact. This is now the fact. This is where we're going. I'm not detouring from it in the name of Jesus. 
And so your, your brain will try to challenge it. Your everyday life will try to challenge it. But we don't live by that. We live by what the kingdom says. We're not of this kingdom. So that's how you, it's almost like a separating one. Now think about this. When you're a little kid, um, this is your realm. I think newborn babies, especially until they're one years old, somewhere in there, sometimes you can tell they're seeing in the spirit. They're, they're, it's like they've arrived from the super on the natural. And so they, they are not necessarily totally aware that, that um, uh, they're not from the kingdom of heaven. You can tell. You'll, you'll see by how they look around or, or kids will say, oh, I saw something, you know, because they're, they're very porous and they're very open to the supernatural. Then this world hardens us as we go along and we forget where we came from. Right? And then we'll go through different things and then we really think that this world is determining everything because this is our home and how could this do this to us or whatever. And as you mature in Christ, you'll separate away and it's like you begin to almost feel like you're here watching a movie. I'm actually part of this kingdom and this is what's going on, uh, the kingdom of heaven, and this is what's going on here in this kingdom. I'm just here in it. I'm here seeing it. I'm here walking through it. I'm here to announce things to it. I'm here to declare. I'm here to proclaim. I'm here to get uh, my family to get up and running to do the same so that as I depart, they carry it on. See, we begin to have that knowledge that we're actually, we're not from here. We're all about uh, helping this world get saved. But this is not our home. So um, he read something, Calvin read something uh, regarding uh, Isaiah chapter 42. I'm going to start up a little bit farther um, in the passage. Now, if this was a rhema to us, we could just grab this and go. How it is a rhema to us and, and, and that we can claim it is this is the character of God. This is how he operates. It says in verse 6, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness for a righteous purpose. I will also take you by the hand and keep watch over you, and I will appoint you as a covenant to the people. So he, he's also talking about the Messiah, but in that, we do now what Jesus did, right? So we're in that covenant, and he has us here for a righteous purpose. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, and those who sit in darkness from the prison. And I am the Lord that is my name. My glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved idols. Indeed, to the, the former things have come to pass. And he goes on. So there's some key things in here. Uh, Calvin mentioned about he's not going to share his glory. But this other part mentions the purpose of 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 Christ and the purpose of us, you know, and there's so many things through the scripture that say, this is why we're here. We're not from here, but this is what we're doing here. So part of these meetings is to help us to see, oh, that's right. We're, we're getting our orders from the kingdom. We're really from right. We're hearing from where, where our home is. Our homeland has now sent us something. There is a message from the king that just arrived. Um, you know, the messenger has given it to us, and we go, oh, okay, here's our next assignment. See it? Here's our next thing that we go to. So we seal that in prayer, and we proclaim it in prayer. We declare it in prayer, and it keeps it in motion. That's why... Um, as you do that, if you do that the right way, next year at this time, you will not have forgotten what happened here. Because that word will be so alive in you all year. You'll go, yeah, this. Then something else happens at the next open heavens or whatever or the next meetings, and you'll go, oh, that connects back into what was told me last year. Because, see, this is what he told me. And then he added this to it. And it, it keeps the picture going. But as soon as that cuts off, then we get disorientated and we start to think that we're actually from here. <laughs> and this thing has so much control over us. and We don't know what to do and how are we going to battle it. The battle belongs to the Lord and he sends his messengers and he imparts to us. So, Father, we receive and have received impartations. And so uh, for those sitting here right now, we seal that within our hearts. 
by the word of our mouth. That's our prayer today, that Holy Spirit, that you would stamp that on our heart, that it would be sealed like a tattoo, like a, a, a seal from a king, um, that we know it's a signet. It's like, mm, oh, that's the king's statement on my heart. That was signed right there by Lord Jesus. That was signed by the Holy Spirit. That belongs to me. This is the action that I take. And no other action will we take but the action that was in that letter to our heart, that in that signet. Hallelujah. He has called us. He has called us. And we're not going to be outside of, of, of the anointing. So this, for people who this was new um, for as you were, and we'll process this in the weeks to come during prayer, but people that, you know, maybe this was your first time being prophesied over or prayed over in that session or uh, in a way or whatever, and, and then maybe it was the first time having deliverance or seeing a deliverance. So that also is something we, we have to not just go, oh, that was hard, and move on. That means we're going to have to ask the questions, right? We're going to need to know what your questions are so we can get that answered, so we can build on that foundation, so we don't lose what was imparted to you, right? So you get a sealed uh, letter from the king, right? He sends his messenger, and you're sitting here as a warrior. You're like, okay, I don't know what, what hill are we supposed to take next? Where are we supposed to go, Lord, or whatever? And you get that. It's going to light you up because you go, oh, this is it. This is what we're supposed to do. Let me, let me check to make sure this is God, and you can see that it's sealed by the signet ring. Right? That's how, that's how a king does it. They, that's what their rings were for. They were huge. And they usually had a signature on them or letters on them or whatever where they would stamp that into the letters. So you knew only the king can stamp that puppy. Right? And how many of you had that revelation as words were coming? You're like, only God would know this. You know, you, it, it's like Calvin disappears and you go, oh, man, God. How, you know, whoa. Because only God would know this stuff about us. Only God would be able to, to do that. And um, so that's that sealing part of it. But as you get away a little bit out into your, at your job or, your, or whatever, you have to remind yourself, you have to relook at that letter. So get your prophecies off your phone, get them off of line or whatever, and go over them. And I just admonish you, please write them out. Leave them in your Bible and read them as often as you can. And when another word comes or the Lord gives you a personal word or whatever, write that out. In fact, you know, start a book. Start a journal that you can look back because you'll be able to track what he told you, and this is how he added to it. Here it is again. Oh, and he somebody refer, somebody way out here referred to that back there, and they weren't even in the same meeting. You know, um, it, all it will do is spark you on to um, your most holy faith being in operation. So these services should have imparted to us a fire that lights up the gifting that's already in us by faith. Faith has corresponding action then, right? So that means we receive, you know, like I've said before, you hear, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word, whether it be a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, whatever, word of God, it goes in. And, um, and then after that, you see. And for some of us, you sat like as the word was coming, because you were getting pictures, you were seeing what he was saying, right? So then you see, then you say, then you do. That's how it works. That's what faith does. So if you hear and it falls, you never got the picture, it escapes you, right? If you hear and you see and you don't start to say, chances are you'll probably never do. See, so it's hear, see, say, do. So that, that's key of a measurement that you can say, well, the words I've had in the past, uh, I don't know, you know, what's happened or whatever. Well, where's your picture? Do you still have that? Uh, no, it's kind of faded. You better go look in the album of what you've saved. Get, let God give you a brand new, fresh picture of that then. You know, get yourself a copy. <laughs> and then you begin to speak what he already said that you heard and saw. And then you'll end up doing. The body of Christ has not been in action enough because it doesn't do, because it doesn't say, because it doesn't see. It just hears and hears and hears some more. 
And um, so I believe this year is going to be a year of prosperity. And how, um, you know, you can just say that generally, but he's going to be teaching us on prosperity, how to seed time and harvest. And it really does go back to hear, see, say, do. And how the body is going to come up into prospering is not hearing, well, I heard that. That's a good word. I heard, I heard, I heard. It's he's literally going to catch us away in the seeing. And then we're going to say, now we're going to say what we saw and heard. And we're going to say another picture that he gives us prophetically. Since I saw that, now I'm going to prophesy over it. See, the Lord gave me a picture. So this is what he said, telling me to say over it. That's another way of saying. And then it'll cause you to start looking for where, what do I do? What do I do? And action will then correspond with, with what you heard. Um, I've seen it too many times where uh, people, especially conference junkies, where they go from one thing to the next, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. Let me hear, let me hear, let me hear. And you're like, and you're going to do what? What you doing? What you doing? <laughs> and, and you look and there's no, there's no track record of any doing. It's just here, here, here. So I expect by faith, that God is lighting us up into the picture right now. We're, her, we're here, heard, and in the weeks to come, we're going to start seeing things. And that's where people will say, God showed me. See? I heard what he said, but then he showed me. Uh, whether it be through a vision, a dream, um, just a picture inside of yourself, well, open vision, all of those things. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit out of my spirit onto all flesh. And these different things will take place. So it's not just about hearing. Um, and the law would say, I said, now go do. Now, that's hard. The law says, I said, now go do. That's actually meant um, when you're raising children. Uh, that's really meant for under the age of 13 is called the age of directives. You know, I said, take the garbage out. Yeah, but why? I, I can't see why I should have to. It doesn't matter what you see. Go do it. Learn to follow instruction. Right? But then as we mature, then it's like we begin to see. And then we ourselves begin to say. And then we begin to do on our own. That's how it's supposed to work. So the same thing works in the kingdom is where the Lord says, uh, I need you to do this. Yes, sir. But why? I don't see where I should have to. Jimmy doesn't have to. And that's that immature side of us. But when we hear and we do and we hear and we do, that obedience brings us up into more. And then he starts to disclose stuff to us. We begin to see pictures. And then he'll say, no, I'm not going to say something. You say something. And then you begin to say Prosperity comes that way in all different avenues um, to, to see yourself out of financial debt. You have to hear, you have to see, you have to say, you have to do. See it? So what we received uh, can have an effect of almost like if you're not used to it, for, for those of you who might not be or whatever, it can cause a shock and an awe. You're like, whoa, you know, you stand and you can feel the anointing. Maybe you went down under the power. You, you heard something that was like, woo. And the scripture says, like, Peter was cut to the heart. It was like, oh, right? Don't leave it there. Now let's begin to say, if you didn't get a picture there, say, God, show me. What did that really mean? Because the first thing you intook was huge. The next things that he'll bring out of that one thing that he said to you, are going to be bigger. He's going to open it up so that you can see that. So let's lay hands on our eyes just as a, as a form of, of faith. God, we want to see what you said. We want to see what you said. The scripture makes it clear that where there's images, there's gates. And uh, we want those gates open to your spirit and closed to the enemy. Lord God, the gates of our eyes be open to you. Be open to where we came from. Be open to your principles. Be open to what you've said to us, Lord God. Be loose free to see. 
I think we're actually going to take this into the, the, the series, Kevin, just so you know, <laughs> this, this section. Because um, if we can get this principle, you, you'll probably get you know, tired of me saying it, because I'll be saying it a lot this year. So because if you get this measurement inside of you where you're um, approaching anything, you have to just stop and go, OK, what have I heard? If you haven't heard from God, then you need to start there. Well, I'm having a problem with my son. I'm having a problem with my leg. I'm having a problem with finances. I'm having a problem, whatever it is. What did he say? What did he say in his word? Right? And, and allow him to show you a picture of that. So that it sticks in you. It'll abide in you. And that picture then will cause you to say, next thing we know, I'll see you the following week or whatever, you, and I'll say, well, how's your leg feeling? Well, this is what the Lord says. And I declare I am the healed of the Lord. Why, why do you say that? You can do that digitally, like, like I said, in the age of directives. Well, that's what God said to do. No, you can also do it where God's given you a picture. I saw myself healed. By his stripes, I'm already healed. I saw it. I saw it in the spirit. I saw that farm we're going to move to. I saw that ranch that we're going to open up. I saw this thing that he promised me. I, I saw it in my spirit. Um, you know, there is a, uh, oh, what is his name? It's not Cho. I think it was Cho, yeah, where uh, Kenneth uh, Copeland shared the story of, you know, they needed different things in the church. They needed a pulpit. They needed uh you know, he needed a bicycle because this was his transportation. I mean, he has one of the biggest churches in the world, this guy does. But this is where they're starting out. The prosperity was not there. And he got a hold of this principle, and he said, show me, God, what, what you'd say about that. So he spoke by his word. He got the picture, and then he would repeat that to people. He'd say, you know, right over here is my pulpit. You see it? I see it. Mahogany wood. It looks like such and such. Blah, blah. I saw it. Well, when we're so stuck in this kingdom, we're like, I don't see nothing. Well, he's talking. We're spiritual beings first. Kicked this body off, and we, we can see a whole lot more. It's right there. We're trying to receive it into the physical realm from the spiritual realm. So he had received the picture of it, and he's like, and it's going to be right there. That's, that's where it is. Thank you, Lord, for that. It's a beauty. Look at that. I see it. It sounds like crazy, right? Um, there's my bicycle, and it's this kind of bicycle. This is this, and he, and, and he would announce it. Uh, I think the other one he announced to people is that he was pregnant with souls. And so even his congregation, they didn't understand that they would come up and touch his belly and say, oh, pastor, you know, you're pregnant. When's the baby do kind of thing? Well, um, because he saw it. He saw himself full of souls full of the ability to lead people or whatever. Well, all of that came to pass because he got the picture. And then he said, and the more he said, he heard, and the more he saw, and he said, and the more he would do around that, right? And um, so what causes to do, like if, you, you know, you're going, you see something, then you start, I got to move this out of here. We got to get rid of this old furniture because I know he just promised me something. He wants this room for our prayer room. So we're going to have to move this stuff out. So there's things you do because of what you saw and heard. Right? And you began to say it. And then he provides. But where we gridlock is like, man, that was a good word from the Lord. Whew, I was fired up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Year later, it's like, what was that? It was something about something about my job? I don't know, you know, and we forget it even. When it's welded and it abides in you, you don't forget. You will eat, sleep, drink it. You wake up to it. He sat.